You are listening to an audio podcast created by the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Our mission is to help people understand their world better through geography. What is totals and how can it help you read a map? Our expert geographer is Dr. David Lanegren, director of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education and John S. Hall Professor of Geography at McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. And now, here is Dr. Lanegren. I'm us all the time, not just in geography classes. Maps appear in magazines and newspapers, on television, on websites. And as the culture becomes more electronically literate, the need to understand how to read maps becomes more important. There are some basic rules that everyone uses when they use a map or analyze a map or read a map. These words are all interchangeable. So what we'd like to do now is take you through a checklist or a little uh, rubric of how to look at a map and make sure that you get the most information out of the map as, as possible. So when you are confronted with a map, the very first thing you should do is look at the date and see when was this map made. That will obviously tell you a whole lot of information, but that is very important. And what's really critical about this is some map makers leave the date off. So it's kind of a fudging on their part so that they can use older data and pass it off as newer data. So the first thing to look at is the date. Now it may seem strange that I've said look at the date before you look at the title, but I'm serious here, the, the, the date is the most important thing, the, the title comes next. So you look at the title and see, you know, obviously it's going to be short, um, but what the title conveys in terms of the purpose of the map. If the map is accompanying an article or an essay or a piece of news, then you need to see how the map title matches up with the title of the accompanying article. So we have first the date, then the title. Then we look at the author or the publisher, and again, frequently map makers leave the author or publisher off. But it's very important to know if your map is made by the government of uh, the People's Republic of China or the government of France or the National Geographic Society or some uh, underground organization seeking to take over the world. Uh, so we, we, you need to know who made the map, if it's possible to find out. I mean, frequently it's not. All you can find out is the person who published the map. Then there's the legend, uh, the or the key that tells you what the patterns on the map are indicating. Um, that varies, of course, from map to map. Another important aspect of maps and cartography is the concept of orientation, which is, of course, structuring the map so that it's possible to see the directions north, south, east, west. They're usually indicated with a device that's called a compass rose. And that's a very old term, but it's basically an artistic rendition of the compass. In the United States and most of the English-speaking world, uh, maps are structured so that north is at the top. This is a convention. Uh, it, the maps don't have to have north at the top. And in fact, the term orientation comes from a time when east was at the top of maps, when maps were oriented toward Jerusalem. But that term orientation has persisted, and now, of course, it refers to the concept of having north at the, at the top of the map. This confuses people because some people use the word up and the word down to indicate directions on a map with north being up and south being down. And students frequently look at a map of Minnesota or Russia and see rivers flowing to the north and they ask their teacher or friend, how can rivers flow up? But that's just a minor point, uh, kind of an amusing part of the whole discussion of orientation. So all maps have the directions indicated on them, which allow you to locate yourself with the directions and uh, determine how you're looking at the map, even though you're looking at it from top down. The second uh, part of orientation is 
the, the, the notion of how do people locate themselves outside when they're not looking at a map. And, of course, that has to do with the rising and setting of the sun and the position of the pole star Polaris. So all maps are geared to the north, south, east, west structure of the way humans organize space on the planet. Another very, very important feature of cartography is the concept of scale or the concept of level of generalization. So obviously we can't make a map the same size as the Earth. So we draw a scaled representation or a scale model or a reduced view of the Earth. And we have a ratio in these maps. So, for example, we could have a map where one inch equals one, one inch on the map equals one mile on the surface of the Earth. Or we could have a, a map that showed one um, inch on the map equals 125,000 miles on the Earth's surface. We could have any kind of ratio we, we wish. And we talk about maps being large scale or small scale, and this gets a little confusing for students. It refers to the fraction. So a large scale map has a large fraction. So if the map scale was one inch on the, mi uh, on the map equals two miles on the surface of the Earth, that's a large fraction. If the map is one inch on the, if the scale on the map is one inch on the map equals 150,000 inches on the surface of the Earth, that one to 150,000 is a much smaller fraction than one to two. Hence, we use large scale maps for small areas and small scale maps for large areas. The second part of this is that we can show certain things at different scales. Obviously, we can show a lot of detail on a large scale map, but we have difficulty showing general patterns, where on a small scale map, we can show large areas and patterns over large areas, but can't show great detail. So think of scale as another way of generalizing information about the surface of the Earth. Lastly, I'd like to talk a little bit about grid. Some maps will show a grid. Sometimes it's the uh, latitude and longitude grid, and sometimes it's a grid made up by the cartographer and might have alphabets on one side and numbers on the other. And this is used to help people locate things on a map. So the index for a map can sh give you the location in the grid, and then you can take that location and find the spot you're looking for. So grid uh, can be something that's based on the Earth's surface of latitude and longitude, or something that the cartographer has made up to make locating or finding things on the map easier for the map user. So whenever you're looking at maps or thinking about maps, uh, use these concepts to um, decide what sort of information is on the map and essentially what can you use it for. You have been listening to a production of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Background music is courtesy of Jim Hogue of Decor, Iowa. The Minnesota Alliance is a nonprofit group of educators and other parties who are interested in promoting an enhanced understanding of our world through improved geographic literacy.